Hey, welcome everyone into the Wells Tech Garage. Thank you for being here tonight. As the title suggests, this is episode one of a new little mini-series that we're going to be doing over the next few days, talking of the diagnostics, repair, and verification of a check engine light problem on this vehicle behind us. Now, before you guys quick run away because you don't have a Toyota in your garage, a lot of the testing and diagnostics that we're going to be doing today and tomorrow and the next day are all going to be related or relatable to any sort of other vehicle that has this exact same problem. So our testing is going to be very generic and you guys will be able to apply it to anything. All right, so the vehicle at hand tonight is an 07 Toyota 4Runner, 4 liter V6 in here and this has 145,000 miles on it with the customer complaint of an intermittent check engine light and reduced fuel economy, okay? This is what he's coming in with and why don't we just start with step one in this vehicle I drove it in check engine light was on so let's pull the trouble codes and see what we have all right let's grab Toyota confirm 16 pin just hooked up to the DLC under the dash let's do an automatic search this is a 4Runner and we got a couple date codes here this is an 07 so we'll go up to 09 4Runner 2007, six cylinder, perfect, that looks great. Let's grab a system, let's grab powertrain because we're looking for an engine PCM stored code. All right, and let's check our fault code. All right, a P0016 crankshaft position, camshaft position correlation, bank one, sensor A. So what exactly does that mean? It basically is a code saying that the mechanical timing of this engine could potentially be off. The computer watches both of our cam sensors and our crank sensor and checks the timing of the engine by watching both those, okay? It is good to note that this is a two-trip failure code, so keep that in mind. If you're diagnosing this code, you clear it out and it might not come back right away. It does take two trips to set. So here is a picture of a little engine diagram that I drew up. We have our camshafts at the top here and our crankshaft at the bottom, all connected with a chain running around this thing, and we got a couple sensors, cam sensors at the top, crank sensor down here. So when this engine is timed, it's very, very important that our timing is perfect, okay? Because as the crankshaft spins around, our pistons come up and down inside of the cylinder. If our camshaft is out of time, and we spin that cam around and open up our valves at the wrong time, there's potential there that the piston could come up inside of the cylinder and smack the valves and bend a valve, okay? That is why our cam timing is so important on these engines, okay? So the computer watches the timing of this sense of this cam, watches the timing of this cam, and watches the timing of the crankshaft, and it has an idea in its head of where these are all supposed to line up in time, okay? It's got this idea in there, and if it falls, without, uh, falls out of that, that time frame, then it's going to set a correlation or a deviation code, basically saying that it thinks the engine timing is off. Okay, so what are our potential causes or our possible failures? Well, first and foremost is mechanical engine timing, either a stretched chain, maybe a worn tensioner, worn guide, something potentially caused the timing chain to jump on this engine. Our crank sensor could be causing a problem. Our cam sensors could be causing a problem. You know, maybe a skewed sensor or something like that is causing this code to set. Our VCT system could potentially cause problems with this. More than likely, you would end up with some sort of VCT code potentially, but it is possible the VCT system is affecting this. Of course, you have wiring. You could have a resistance issue, or your engine control module might just be setting a false code, okay? Maybe a problem inside of the engine control module. So what can we do for some quick checks, right? You sit down in the driver's seat, you pull up your codes, now what do you do? What can you do quickly? Well, first of all, we know that this, this chain inside of this engine is run in an oil bath. There's oil in here. It's possible that there's not enough lubrication. Maybe our oil level is low. Maybe the condition of the oil is poor, something like that. So a quick check of the oil level. Looks perfect, it's right at its mark. Let's uh, wipe it off. All 
Okay, that looks great. Our oil level is right where it's supposed to be, and it looks clean. It doesn't smell burnt. I would say our oil is just fine. Now, one thing you want to look at too was the oil just changed. It's possible somebody maybe put in the wrong viscosity oil, or somebody put on a cheap filter that's maybe restrictive, something like that that's affecting the oil pressure. That could set this problem as well. Check for your TSBs and your recalls. Um, just simple, go to Google, type in Toyota 4Runner P0016, see if you have any sort of TSBs or recalls related to that. Um, or you can check your service information, of course. And since we're already in the vehicle with the scan tool, you could actuate your VVT solenoids. Make sure that your VVTs and your phasers are working on the front of the motor. Make sure that they're actually able to move the cams, change the timing, and cause this engine to run differently while it's at idle. So why don't we go ahead and do that? Let's fire this thing up and get into the scan tool and command these things. All right, let's back up here. Let's grab actuation test. And we're gonna look for VVT, some sort of VVT control test. And as this is loading, I don't notice the motor running poorly. It doesn't seem to be shaking. It sounds pretty decent. And when I drove it, I didn't notice anything either. All right, let's scroll down. Maybe too far. There we go. Control the VVT linear or system. On this scan tool, linear is going to mean that we're going to test this thing in certain percentages so we could up the percentage. Or if we do system, we can turn the VCT solenoid either off or 100% on. So let's just grab that for a quick check. Uh, operate with ignition on, engine on, shift selector in park. Okay. Let's grab some data all data stream, and I want to see our engine speed for one. Let's grab that, and let's grab the VVT parameters down here. And we're on bank one, so let's grab aim angle, change angle, control status, and uh, duty cycle for our oil control. Let's confirm. Okay. So control status is on, that means the computer's got control over the VVTs. Our engine speed looks pretty normal, around 800 or so. And our VVT stuff is all at zero. We turn this on, we should hear this engine change. Oh, it almost died. All right. So that's 100% duty cycled on the scan tool. Definitely created a change in our engine. So. We know now that bank one is able to control the oil control valve, change our cam timing, and then go back to normal. Okay, so VVT on bank one looks pretty good. Let's grab bank two, we'll do the same thing. System, we'll grab the same monitoring data. I wish it would remember that, but now I just go ahead and select it again. Grab everything for bank two. There we go. All right, RPM still looks good. Again, everything's at zero. Let's turn this on, and we should hear the same thing now. There we go. It almost died out again. Running really, really rough, shaking, misfiring. And then we release it, and it goes back to normal. All right, let's back out of the scan tool, and let's shut this thing off. So in just a few seconds of sitting there in the driver's seat, pulling the code, looking at what the code is, and then commanding our VVTs, we now know that the system is able to control our oil control valve, move our cam phaser, and change our timing like it's supposed to. The VVT system seems to be working properly. Now, that's not a 100% check. We weren't really looking at the variables in there, such as did it set to the right point or anything like that. This was just a quick check to make sure that the system was functioning on the front of the motor, okay? Now, that doesn't mean that we should take VVT off of our list of diagnostic possibilities, but it is something now that we can bump more towards the bottom. So, that brings up our next diagnostic test. So, now we have to diagnose this thing 
beyond any doubt at all, okay? And this is where the whole work smarter, not harder aspect comes in. Now, we're gonna be doing our next test tomorrow night. So make sure you guys join me for this at the same time tomorrow night for episode two of this class when we start on actually diagnosing this thing and getting 100% certain of what the problem is before we try and sell any sort of job to the customer, okay? So tomorrow night, same time, same place. We'll see you guys then. Thank you.